Hi everyone. Welcome to the final video in the Piney Public Library's financial education series. Once again, Colleen is here from the Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union to talk to us about some different financial topics. This week, the last one we decided to end with is for tips for living on your own. So Colleen, you can take it away. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so again, this evening is uh, your first time out of the house. You're really excited. You want to live on your own. Uh, even if it's not by yourself, it's just, it feels independent. So I have a cute little video, got some great information for a few minutes, and then we're going to go over some slides. I was like, well, you have a birthday party every single year. Of course, my hypothetical housewarming party would take priority. Yeah, sure. Hold up. What is this? Oh, I've seen this before. Actually, Jen, since you're thinking of getting your own place, you should probably play it. What do you do? Well, common apartment expenses pop up here, and you pay them by whacking them with this mallet. That sounds awesome. I'm so ready. We'll see. It starts off pretty easy with rent. Piece of cake. But you have to keep track of utilities and things like cable and internet too. I get it. Regular budget stuff. This is so easy. Good, because this is still the practice mode. The actual moving into an apartment mode starts now. Ah, what is all this stuff? There's your security deposit and first and last month's rent. Said some landlords ask for that. Sometimes a credit or background check is required and you need to pay for those too. There's a pet deposit and you can't forget that parking stalls sometimes have an extra fee. Then there's association fees for certain apartment buildings. Oh, and renter's insurance. And that's not counting moving expenses. Uh-oh. Moving companies or truck rental or a pizza budget for friends helping out. Packing materials like boxes and tape. And the bare necessities of apartment setup like toilet paper, light bulbs, cleaning supplies, utensils, a first aid kit, a toolkit, and we haven't even gotten a furniture yet. Uh, futon. <laughs> How did I do? Well, you missed your pet deposit and your electricity bill. So you'd be living in the dark and you wouldn't have your cat. And judging by your score, it looks like you need to have a lot more than just a couple months rent saved up before you make the move. Why is it doing that? It's a new month, so some of the expenses from that last round are going to pop up again. So when does this game actually end? Oh, Jen, it never ends. So that's very cute. It makes it seem a bit overwhelming to uh, move out on your own, but it's an exciting thing. Are you ready? Are you ready to make the big move? And this could be, uh, are you heading off to college and you're, you want to find a place uh, you know, independently? Are you moving in with a friend? You're sharing an apartment? But there's so many things to consider other than just, oh, it's rent. I need to, I'm going to move out and I need to be able to afford rent. So this goes over some of those costs. Um, uh, building a budget. How do you prepare? How do you prepare to look for an apartment? How do you know what's in your budget? You will need a budget before you even start looking at places. Right? It's the same as a car. You don't just walk into a dealership and find the car you like and then figure out if you can afford it or not. You know, you, you'd be really disappointed if you couldn't afford that car now. So you want to look at your income. You want to understand what you can afford, what makes sense, and what you can stick with, what you can live with. Because rent is a contract. You know, when you're living at home and you don't pay your mom that $20 you owe her. She, she might get mad at you, but she's probably not going to kick you out of the house. No, at this point, you really could be kicked out of somewhere. 
So this is an example spending ratio for how your budget uh, could be broken up. Typically, uh, people spend about 30% of their income on housing. So for every $100 you take home, you spend about $30 on uh, you know, rent, renter's insurance, um, you know, maintenance around the house, 15% uh, for transportation, and that can go higher. That, of course, depends if you live farther away from work, so you can spend a little bit less on, you know, um, a house. Well, then you might have to pay more in transportation. So figure out what your income is, you know, what your weekly hours are, your gross, your net, and then take that net number and divide it into 30%, 15%, 15%, and see how much that number is. And you wanna start shopping around that number. Spending ratios are a general guide. You don't have to follow exactly 15% or exactly 30%, but it gives you a good sense of all of the different expenses that, you know, food is going to be pretty significant. Uh, you know, entertainment, it's going to, and electronics especially, is going to be more than you need, or excuse me, more than you think. So keep those spending ratios in mind uh, as for building a budget. You will have to add things in, perhaps tuition, uh, an unexpected textbook. You need to know that you can afford this with these unexpected with unexpected uh, costs. So how much can you afford, right? So let's look at a typical housing expense, housing ratio. Remember, this would be 30%. So let's say a one bedroom apartment, $750. That's cheap. I'd say that's pretty cheap, but all right. A cheap one bedroom apartment for $750 a month. You've gotta have renter's insurance. Uh, every apartment I've ever lived in has required renter's insurance and they required that I showed them every six months. Uh, and something to know about renter's insurance, if you are living with a roommate, renter's insurance protects your items, your stuff in the apartment, right? You don't own that, you don't own the home. So there's a homeowner's, you know, the leasing company owns the building. And if something happens to the building, you know, the wall falls down, it's their insurance that covers it. If it's a fire and your items get burnt up, that's your renter's insurance that covers your items. So don't think that the apartment is gonna replace, you know, all of your stuff. And if you have a roommate, your policy covers your items. Your roommate needs to have their own policy. There's no way your insurance company is gonna get two beds, you know, two dressers, two TVs, one person. You will have utilities. You will have to pay utilities, water, electric, gas. Depending on the apartment, sometimes it'll come with water and gas, but you have to pay electric. Or it'll come with gas and electric, but you have to pay water. So usually one of those, at least one of those is covered in the rent. But electricity is separate, and it depends how much it is. Is it uh, are you using the air conditioner a lot, running it in the winter is much more expensive. But then you're turning your heat up in the in the winter. In the summer, you're turning your air conditioning on and running it a lot. And in the winter, you're turning your heat up, which is then you know making your gas more expensive. Uh, parking, parking is something a lot of people don't think about. It's just assume that you'll get a parking space with your with your place to live, right? I mean, your, your house has a parking spot. Again, depending on the apartment building, it may come with no parking whatsoever. You know, think of a, a big city where it's just street parking, you know, and you're going to have to drive around until you find parking. Uh, it may have designated parking, you know, just for these residents, uh, a parking garage that's just for these, uh, you know, people. A lot of times they will have a uh, upgrade. Uh, I know in my last apartment, 
uh, for many, many years, I parked right, right in front of the door, right in front of my house, or right in front of the apartment. And then a couple of years ago, they built these, you know, awnings, these kind of covers over a bunch of spaces. And so now if your car was parked under there, it wouldn't get, you know, snowed on or rained on. But if you wanted to park there, you had to buy a space. So I believe it was $25 a month. And I thought about it and I was like, that's, that's a lot of, that's too much. So I said, no, 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 thank you. And I had to park farther away, which in the grand scheme of things is not that big of a deal. But, you know, is it a brand new car that I got? Um, you know, maybe I have a, a walking issue, you know, where I really do want to be able to park closer. You know, what kind of parking is available? Do they charge you just for the parking? Uh, and it's all together. So when you're thinking in your head, oh, I'm looking for an apartment, I can spend about 750 in rent. Well, your housing expense is really more like $1,000, right? You've got to pay the electricity, you've got to have the lights on, the water on, um, internet. Internet's not required, but these days, especially with everything virtual, everything uh, mobile, I mean, it seems like, what did we do before we had uh, uh, the internet? So likely you will want to set up a wireless internet for your apartment. Um, doesn't mean cable TV, don't have to get cable TV, uh, but living off of public Wi-Fi all the time, uh, especially when you're doing bills and um, personal information, you really don't want to do that on a public uh, Wi-Fi site. So again, let's say your housing expense total for the month is about $945. You figured out that at the end of the month, you take home $3,200. And when you do the math, that's 30%. So that's, that's what number you want to be shooting for, right? You want to be shooting for 945. So when you're looking at apartments, don't look for apartments that have a rent of 945. You know, make sure the rent is cheaper so you can include the utilities. All right, first apartment reality check. What happens if you find an apartment you love but it's way outside your spending ratio. And this is probably gonna happen because it's fun to shop, right? It's, it's fun to imagine the new places where we could live. You know, it's fun to imagine, you know, our items uh, in, this, in this place. Um, I looked at many apartments and fell in love. Oh, there's a washer and dryer. It's got a balcony. Oh, there's a patio. Um, there's two bathrooms. Uh, there's a master bedroom, you know, vaulted ceilings, whatever it is that gets you excited, you're going to find some places that you really like that are out of your, you can't afford. And you have to acknowledge that. You have to be ready to understand that. You have to be ready to say, I'm shopping in this price range and I'm sticking to this price range because I'm in a contract. And if I don't pay the rent that I just, you know, hope I'll be able to pay at the end of the month. Maybe I can work some extra hours or work some overtime. Then I should be able to afford it. If anything happens and I can't make that, I broke the contract, I broke the lease, it's, it's bad. So really make sure you are not setting yourself up for failure. You're signing a lease for either six months or a year, probably a year. So you need to know that you have an income for the next year. Well, you have your heart set on it. You, you found the place and maybe it's just, it's just too much. You know, you, you really would like to find a way to make it work. Well, what can we do? Can you increase your income? Again, can you pick up more hours? Uh, can you depend on working uh, additional shifts? Are you going to pick up a second job? Or as they have now, you know, a side hustle, you know, do you make blankets and sell them on Etsy? Do you want to bake pies and sell them? Is there a way you can increase your income? Um, reconsidering your must haves. You know, if you want this beautiful apartment, 
you may have to cut back on other things. You know, you may have to find a roommate or you may not be able to buy any furniture for quite a while. Or, you know, you might not be able to get a car when you were going to get an apartment and a car and now you can just get the apartment. So think of how your spending can change proportionally. If you reduce your spending in another area, if instead of going out for lunch every day, you, you know, eat a, eat a ham, home packed lunch every day, well, the money you save eating out, you can then put that towards your housing, right? So you can control different areas of your spending, but again, you have to be clear, it, am I gonna eat out or am I going to eat a bag lunch every single day? Sharing the space, taking on a roommate. I really do recommend getting a roommate. They don't always end in the best situation. It's, it's hard, it can be hard to live with someone, but it's a great experience. You learn a lot. You learn about sharing, respecting space, um, professionalism, you know, bills, trust. So it's much, much, much more significantly cheaper with a roommate. You know, half of the electricity, half of the internet, half of, uh, you know, the, elect the electric bills. Or maybe look in a different location. If you just realized you can't afford this really nice apartment. Well, maybe if you search in a different area, you know, instead of uh, uh, the Royal Oak, Berkeley, well, maybe now you go look in Warren and Hazel Park, maybe there's something there. Um, you might be able to find the same type apartment for a lower amount in a, in a different location. So you don't have to give up right away. It's worth looking into and trying to find a solution, but also be realistic. All right, this slide is amazing. <laughs> Average rents across the country. The difference is staggering. Uh, it doesn't have Michigan, but I'd say Indianapolis and Cincinnati are pretty close and that's about right. That's, you know, I said the 750 for a one bedroom apartment seems cheap. So if these are one bedroom apartments, 898, yeah, that, that seems about right. Well, what if you're looking in other areas of the country, especially New York City? I mean, New York City it just kind of takes your breath away here. And that's, uh, that's for a one bedroom apartment. Uh, again, location, location, location. The farther away from New York City, the different areas in New York City, uh, but certainly just having a, a New York zip code it's gonna get a lot more expensive. So if you're thinking of getting an apartment, you know, when you're going to NYU, or if you're going to UCLA, uh, you need to look at the rent prices for that area. It's potentially much, much more expensive. Can your income handle, uh, you know, where you're living? And it's, it's interesting to, to look this up every now and again, uh, to see how these prices have changed. And I, I can vouch for the New York City, my best friend has always lived in uh, New York City, and back in college, she lived with one of her friends and the, and the friend's boyfriend. So it was three people sharing a two-bedroom, and they still each paid over $1,000 a month rent, and it was the tiniest place she could touch both walls of her bedroom, you know, at, at once. So be careful. All right more than just a rent check. Again, I keep focusing on rent, but rent is just one of the many expenses that you will be responsible for. Uh, when taking your total housing costs, look past just that first rent payment. Um, first and last month's rent. The leaser, whether it's a person you're leasing from or a company, but the person who is renting the apartment to you has, has the right to be slightly suspicious. They, I wouldn't say suspicious, has the right to be wary. So they're going to ask for this month's rent and last month's rent. Because what if something happens? What if you disappear tomorrow? You're supposed to be here a year. If you just pack up and leave, well, at least I have a month's rent 
that I can now use to try and find someone else to get the apartment. So that's common. You keep in mind, you'll need two months rent uh, to start. Uh, packing materials. A lot of times you forget about packing materials and moving expenses. You just think like, oh, we're going to grab some tape, some garbage bags, some boxes. We'll be fine. Not as much fits in a box as you think. And it takes a lot more boxes and a lot more garbage bags and sometimes a lot more trips. And you might not be able to make many trips. You know, if you are moving across the state, you may have to rent a moving van. You can't make multiple trips. Uh, it might be easier or cheaper for you to not bring furniture and just get new, cheaper furniture in the new location. You know, that's something to consider. Uh, something else, well, something to keep in mind uh, when you leave the apartment, whenever your last, you know, your last day is, and they come to look around and, and see, yep, everything still looks good. That apartment has to be clean, clean, very clean. You cannot just leave your apartment a mess. Now you say, well, I took all my stuff out of it. You know, there's, there's some stuff on the floor. All the counters need to be wiped clean. All the floors need to be clean. All the, you know, the, the bathtub, uh, inside the cabinet. Um, and what happens if you don't, if you don't, they come in, they look around, they inspect the apartment and they say, this is gonna take a lot of work to make it look good again. We're gonna have to use that last month's rent that you gave us. We're gonna have to use that money to fix the place up. So you're not getting it back. Um, that's a, I believe it's a security deposit and well, there's another slide that has security deposit. <laughs> so other things in addition, again, electricity, water. If your pipes are leaking, if your sink is leaking and it's dripping, water's more expensive, right? If you uh, have a roommate that forgets and leaves the lights on and leaves the TV on all day while you're gone, well, that could affect your electricity. You know, what, what about your cable? Do you have Wi-Fi on your phone and at home? or just at home and then you can connect on your phone. You know, you really wanna get the, the most out of your money. Uh, again, parking, household items. Don't forget Windex, you know, bleach, laundry detergent, hand soap, all of those basic things you kind of forget doesn't just come with the place. Do you have any paper towels? Do you have any uh, wipes, any garbage bags? So there's a lot of planning to go into just the process of moving and getting it set up. All right, so saving up before making the leap, making sure we're fully prepared before we jump into a new place. All right, so here's an example. First month's rent, again, using the example, was $750. And the security deposit, $750. Let me explain this a little better. They may say first and last month's rent. They may say we need first month's rent and a security deposit. Either way, you will be paying some sort of deposit, some sort of security deposit that you can get back if you leave the place clean. Basically, it's, 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 a, a, con it's a contract saying, hey, Give us $750 now that we can hold on to in case you mess up the place. But if you move out and it still looks good, we'll give you that $750 back. And that's pretty clear. I have gotten every single security deposit back from every apartment I've lived in. I've cleaned it. I mean, it wasn't absolutely perfect. They don't want it to be perfect, but if you move in and you see cracks in the walls or a chip here, or maybe this isn't broken, make sure you note all of those things right away. Make sure you note with the main office, make sure you, you take a picture because you do not want to be responsible for some broken blinds that you're like, hey, those blinds were broken when I moved in here. So keep it in good condition. Don't let your friends punch holes in the walls because 
course you want to get your security deposit back, right? Of course. Uh, you may have to pay for a background check or and or a credit check. Uh, probably definitely a credit check. Again, they don't know who you are. I'm I'm trusting that you're going to give me hundreds, potentially thousands of dollars a month. So I need to know that I'm going to get it. I'm going to see if you have other items in your name. Do you have a credit card in your name? Do you have a student loan? Do you have an auto loan? What is your behavior paying back the money that you owe currently. And I'm gonna use that to help me make a decision whether to rent to you or not, All right? Um, they can say you seem a little too risky. I, I see some late payments and I, I had a lot of trouble with the last renter I had and trying to collect rent payments. So you may lose out on the opportunity of that amazing apartment. Uh, so again, keeping your budget, keeping your credit, keeping everything on point, making sure that reputation stays above ground. Uh, moving costs, $500 seems like a lot, but again, it depends. Are you renting a truck? Um, do you have to get special equipment? You know, uh, a lot of times people, I mean, genuinely you need people. Uh, I, I'm an only child, so I didn't have uh, brothers uh, to help. So I, I was always out, you know, begging my friends to help and you may get them pizza and got to pay for the pizza for all your friends. But who's going to help you? You know, are you hiring someone? Because that's, that's very expensive. Uh, starter furniture. Again, that can depend whether you're uh, bringing furniture. Uh, if you're one of many kids in the house, you may not be able to bring very much at all, maybe just your bed. Um, maybe not even your bed. They want to keep it as a guest room. Um, but when I first moved out, you're not going to have the nicest stuff. Go to a garage sale. You can get silverware and pots and pans and lamps, you know, all of these starter furniture pieces that are not, you know, Macy's, but you want to have a table. You want to have something someone can sit down on. You know, you want to be able to have a paper towel rack. You know, over time, you can start replacing with better, more quality items, uh, or even hand me down items from other people. But really, there's so many little things you need to get that you forget about cords, um, cleaning solutions that look for cheap starter furniture. Uh, and miscellaneous, that could be uh, that could be a lot of things. I mentioned the uh, cleaning. I specifically mentioned the cleaning the apartment because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and it takes many hours because it's the entire apartment. And I've always done it. And the last time, the last time I moved out was a, it was a crazy period. And I was, you know, still working full time. And I said, you know what? I'm going to treat myself and I paid $200, over $200 to hire maids to come in and clean it so I could get my security deposit back. Now I understand I'm paying to get money back, but at the time, in my mind, my time was worth that. Me having to spend the entire day in June, you know, cleaning uh, every bit of this apartment, I thought, you know what, it's worth the $200 for me. It might not be worth two hundred dollars to you. Uh, maybe it's a bigger apartment and it's a lot dirtier, and you got to pay even more than that. Um, there could be uh, all kinds of things. You might have car trouble. If anyone has car trouble, you know, because you have the mattress, uh, and your friend says because of your mattress, you know, you wrecked my my tailpipe, and now you got to replace it. There's a lot of things that can happen. <laughs> so. Again, scoring the apartment means putting down the security deposit. It can also be known as last month's rent. You're going to be subjected to the background check. Probably about fifty to a hundred dollars. They may call this uh, an application fee. You know, there's an, a fee a fee to apply. Uh, moving costs. Don't overlook the costs of moving uh, a trailer. You know, sometimes if you uh, are moving a motorcycle or you have to move a, a kayak or, or, you know, uh, ATV, you know, you need to rent 
uh, special things to move it, uh, boxes, tape, all that stuff. Adds up. And it doesn't need to be a palace. That first place doesn't need to be a bat palace. You know, DIY, DIY is great. Going to Salvation Army, getting that lamp, and then, you know, taking an old t-shirt and, you know, recovering it with a t-shirt and hot glooming underneath and saying, look at this cool, you know, lamp I DIY. That's the key to it, I think, is, is making it your own, finding cheap, cheap things and then making it your own, putting your own stamp on it, repainting a table, uh, you know, sanding down and spray painting um, chairs in, in different colors, you know, make it your own rather than go out and buy, you know, entire furniture sets. They can be very, very expensive. Uh, be sure to have enough for everything. Cause again, this is just the first month, right? This, this is on top of, you know, uh, utilities and internet and all the things you have to pay for anyway, your car, uh, perhaps tuition, and all of this is going to come back next month. You know, next month you won't have the moving costs or the security deposit, but you know, you, you can't spend all of your money the first month, right? You have to make sure you can keep living. You know, you're not gonna live on beans and rice. All right. That was a brief overview of some of the big things to think about uh, before you start looking for your own place to help you decide whether you can uh, afford it, whether you're ready. Uh, it's a great idea to kind of look into it, to practice, to start searching you know, make a hypothetical budget uh, and see if you can make it work without actually, you know, signing it, without actually signing up for that lease. If you break a contract, that's really expensive. You're obligated to pay for that that whole year. <laughs> so make sure you ask a ton of questions. Ask questions to the leasing office, ask questions to the people at the, you know, hardware store, uh, ask questions to your family, your friends who are helping you, to people at the box store, just ask anyone. Were there any questions today? Any questions tonight about any part of this? No, I'm still not seeing any new questions for us, but I did mention that if anyone has anything that they can still reach out afterwards and that I would contact you on their behalf. Absolutely. And there was a lot of great information that Colleen gave in this presentation on living on your own. One thing that I would like to say um, as someone who has had a few places they rented is I've got my security deposits back too, but sometimes you actually have to uh, bug them to give you the security deposit back. They might not necessarily be as like forthcoming with the information on if you earned it back or not. For my last place, I had to call several times and be like, so did it look good? Do I get my deposit back? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, okay, when? Cause it's been a couple of months now. <laughs> right, exactly. And if you, if, you know, if you were intimidated uh, or just kind of scared, you, oh, don't worry about it, or I, I, I feel weird asking, or, oh, I'm sure there's something wrong. No, it's, it's worth it. If you got to keep calling, that's, that's your money. So that's a good point. Mm -hmm. So that's just something from my own experience that I thought I should bring up, <laughs> that sometimes you just have to be firm and pester them a bit yourself, even if it's uncomfortable for you. Yeah, and quarters. Make sure you have lots of quarters. <laughs> You'll probably need quarters for laundry. <laughs> yes, if you do have, even if you have a washer and dryer in unit, some places do still actually make you pay for it. It differs from place to place, something to look into. <laughs> yeah, it's, and that's one of those things that could, you know, be a, be a deal breaker. It's a huge inconvenience when you're living on the second floor to have to bring all your laundry down to the basement and back up again and compete with the other people in the building who are using it. Are you willing to have that chore or are you willing to pay the extra money that'll get you, you know, a washer and dryer? And that could be, well, it will be a, 
a lot more expensive. <laughs> so it's there's definitely uh, different deal breakers that you can play with to find the perfect place for you. Well, thanks for the presentation, Colleen. We appreciate it. And the whole series was very good. We'd love to have you back sometime in the future. May, we might be looking into that in the fall if people are curious about that. And um, I hope everyone has a good evening and that you all learned some good information. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night. Bye.